Hello and welcome! The PSP has so many unique features, but by far the best feature is how easily modifiable the system is despite Sony's best efforts to stop it. So today I'm going to be showing how to install temporary custom firmware on your PSP and go over what you can do with it once it's installed. But first, a message from us at 16-bit. If you don't know what to do with your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance games when you're done playing with them, why not check out our Game Boy Display shelves? They're designed and 3D printed by us to hold your games comfortably and display them beautifully. If you're interested, why not check out the description to figure out where to get them today. To begin, we need to visit HackInformer.com and look at their guides for installing custom firmware on your PSP. Don't worry, all links will be provided below. They have guides for all PSPs, but today I'll be soft modding just two of my PSPs, my PSP Go and my PSP Slim. But since model numbers do matter here, I'll be referring to my PSP Slim in this video as the PSP Model 3000. To start with though, we're going to be modding my PSP Go. The site will ask for our firmware version and we're going to go and find it. Once we get it, we have to enter it and scroll down the site until we see option 2, install temporary custom firmware. There are options here to install permanent custom firmware, however I would recommend you start out with temporary custom firmware since there's no risk of bricking your system and you can easily remove it if you don't want it or you don't find you're actually utilizing it. There are two firmwares that we can choose from here like LME and Pro-C but for my PSP Go we're going to download and install Pro-C since I find it has better compatibility. Remember to download the version of Pro-C that the site recommends and once it's down, unzip it and throw it onto your PSP in the games folder. Now for the PSP 3000. We'll start off a little bit differently due to there being multiple hardware revisions of the 3000s. So to figure out which one we need, we have to go and download the PSP module checker to figure out which model we're actually working with. Since the link is broken on their site, I'll provide ones that do work download it, throw it into games, and check which model we are using. Technically, it doesn't really matter since we're only doing temporary custom firmware, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Once we get our model number, my PSP is a 03G, we'll follow the rest of the steps like we did with the PSP Go, but this time for our 3000. Once it's done, download the firmware that you want. For my 3000, I want to be downloading LME. So, follow the same steps as before, throw in the game shoulder, and we're done. But now that we have the custom firmware on the PSP, it's time to install it. And fortunately, this installation process is the same all across all platforms. So, just find the install program, press X on it, and once it prompts you, press X again to install it. And once done, congratulations! Your PSP now will reboot into the custom firmware. And now that you have custom firmware installed, your PSP can now do a lot more. Your PSP can now run homebrew-like emulators that can run a variety of systems pretty confidently. You can also run backups of your PSP disks, allowing you not just faster load times, but also allowing your PSP to access games that a good chance it didn't have access to before. On top of all that, you have access to more homebrew, and you can run official PSP software without an actual account associated with the system. There's so much more you can do here, but if you ever at any point decide you don't want custom firmware on your system, or you just want to stock PSP again, just go back into the installation program and just uninstall it and it'll be like it was never there in the first place. But just because you can do quite a bit with the custom firmware doesn't mean that there isn't limitations. If your PSP ever is to lose power or if you were to shut off your system, you'll have to launch the custom firmware software again. Fortunately, Pro-C and LME come with a quick launch application, meaning it's a lot quicker to reboot your system into custom firmware, but it's still a hassle. 
And the only other limitation that I've experienced with custom firmware is that the PSP Ghost pause feature is a little bit bugged. It does work and you can overwrite your previous pauses, but you can never delete it unless you boot back into the official firmware again. But that's all very minor considering what you can now do with your PSP. And as for the differences between LME and Pro C, it's all quite minor unless you own a PSP Go. If you do own a PSP Go and you want to watch UMD movies, you will have to stick with Pro C, which I will be sticking with. But anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you ever so much to Neuron and Team Pro for developing LME and Pro C respectively. As well, thank you to Ryan US and uh, Quick Razor87 for keeping the links alive on Wolo.net. But anyways, I hope this video helps. Thank you ever so much for watching, and as always, have yourself a good day and take care.